While King Aerys II Targaryen is known as the Mad King, a name he clearly did earn, many assume his fault of madness was a slow and gradual decline. While to some extent this is true, there were periods where his mental health did indeed improve, and glimpses of the promising young king he once was shined through, only for him to soon enough fall back into his old habits, harder and deeper than before. This was the case in 274 AC, where the king's madness seemed to abate for a time, when Queen Rhaella gave birth to a son who seemed fit and healthy, and for a while the realm celebrated the birth of this healthy new prince, and a second son they called Jaehaerys, after Aerys's father, King Jaehaerys II. So profound was Aerys's joy, that it seemed to restore in him his old self once again, with his relationship with Tywin Lannister improving greatly. Sadly for Eris and Rhaella and the realm, Prince Jaehaerys died later that same year, very suddenly, plunging Eris into deeper despair and back into madness. In his black rage, he decided the babe's wet nurse was to blame and had the woman beheaded against the advice of his small council. Not long after, in a change of heart, Eris announced that Jaehaerys had been poisoned by his own mistress, the pretty young daughter of one of his household knights. The king had the girl and all of her kin tortured to death. During the course of their torment, it is recorded all confessed to the murder, though the details of their confessions were greatly at odds and contradicting. Something the maesters of the Citadel have known for a long time is that torture is not the best method of extracting information, with prisoners often resorting to telling their captors what it is they want to hear, in the vague hope of freedom, or in a lot of cases, an end to their suffering. The sad truth of the matter is, Prince Jaehaerys likely just died of natural causes, and should not be seen as surprising given the fate of his siblings. In time, the beheading of the wet nurse and the murder of the family of household knights would be forgotten and overshadowed by even more brutal acts to come. But it did cause much outrage and gossip at court at the time, and for the first time it seems whispers of the king's growing madness was becoming known amongst the small folk of King's Landing. After the death of Prince Jaehaerys, Ares made no attempt to comfort his broken wife, who once again had lost another babe. Instead, King Aerys chose solitude and fasted for a fortnight, ending when he made a walk of repentance across the city to the great Sept of Baelor, to pray with the High Septon. What happened inside the walls of the Sept is beyond our knowledge, what words of wisdom the gods bestowed upon the king, unknown. But when he returned to the Red Keep, Aerys announced from that day on he would only lie with and bed his lawful wife, in the eyes of God and men, Queen Rhaella. If what court records and chroniclers say of the time is to be believed that it seems that Eris did keep to this vow, never again taking another mistress. From that day on, he seemed to lose all interest in the charms of women altogether, and the king had become a whole new man in the space of a few hours of praying. Given how changeable Eris was known to be, few believed this latest fad would last, and when Eris was once again bored and frustrated with his wife, he would fall back into old habits. But it seemed his grace's new fidelity was apparently pleasing the mother above. It must be said, as the following year, in 276 AC, Queen Rhaella gave birth to the second son they had prayed for, whom they named Viserys. The babe was said to be small, but robust and as beautiful a child as King's Landing had ever seen. Until the babe grew older, however, many at court held their breath, in case this new prince shared the fate of the poor Jaehaerys. Prince Rhaegar was 17 years old when his younger brother was born, which was indeed a large age gap, speaking to the depths of the issues the king and queen had in producing a second living child. But, despite these issues, Prince Rhaegar was said to be everything that could be wanted in an heir apparent. All of Westeros rejoiced to know that at last he had a brother, another Targaryen, to secure the succession in the unfortunate event something ill befell Rhaegar, or if for some reason he could not father heirs of his own. For the first time in decades, the succession did seem secure. Rather than temper the king's madness, the birth of Prince Viserys only seemed to make Aerys more fearful and obsessive. Though the new young princeling seemed healthy enough, the king was terrified lest he suffer the same fate as his brothers. 
Kingsguard knights were commanded to stand over him day and night, to see that no one touched the boy without the king's express leave. Even the queen herself was forbidden to be alone with the babe, when her milk eventually dried up. Ares insisting on having his own personal food taster suckle at the teat of the prince's wet nurse to ensure that the woman had not smeared poison on her breast. As gifts for the young prince arrived from the lords of the Seven Kingdoms, the king had them piled in the yard and burned for fears that some of them might have been enscrolled or cursed. Later that same year, Lord Tywin Lannister, perhaps unwisely, held a great tourney at Lannisport, funded yet again by his own coin in honour of Viserys' birth. May perhaps it was meant to be a gesture towards reconciliation. There, the wealth and power of House Lannister was displayed for all the realm to see. King Eris at first refused to attend, then relented. But the Queen and Prince Viserys were kept under confinement back at King's Landing. There, Seated on his throne amongst hundreds of nobles in the shadow of Casterly Rock, the king cheered lustily as his son, Prince Rhaegar, newly knighted, unhorsed both of Tywin's younger brothers, Tyget and Geryon Lannister, and even overcame the gallant Sir Barristan Selmy before falling in the champion's tilt to the renowned Kingsguard knight, Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning, perhaps seeking to gain advantage of his grace's high spirit. Lord Tywin chose that very night to suggest that it was past time the king's heir wed and produced an heir of his own. He proposed his own daughter, Cersei, as wife to the crown prince. But Aerys II rejected his proposal brusquely, informing Lord Tywin that he was a good and valuable servant, yet a servant nonetheless. Nor did his grace agree to appoint Lord Tywin's son, Jaime, as squire to Prince Rhaegar. That honour he granted instead to the sons of several of his own favourites, men known to be no friends to House Lannister or the Hand. Thus, once again, the divide between the king and his Hand grew ever deeper. Deeper.